Hi, it's Danny here from the Whiteboard Blog and in this video we're going to take a quick look at how to use Promethean Active Inspire software for your interactive whiteboard. Let's take a look. Okay, so this is Promethean Active Inspire. This is the most recent version that I've just downloaded. I've got it running in Studio View, so this is um, how it would look based on what the Active Studio used to look like. So this is the kind of the secondary view, maybe year five and six um, and secondary view. Um, if you want to switch between the primary and the secondary, I'll, I'll just show you that quickly now because a lot of people um, often need that. Um, if you go to View, um, and primary look and feel. That's changed a little bit from how it used to be. It used to be on the um, the dashboard, but now you go view, primary look and feel, it'll then ask you, do you want to change? If you say yes, then you restart. When you restart the program next time, it'll look like active primary, which is basically if, if Fisher-Price made interactive whiteboard software, it would look like that. Promethean has a floating toolbar, so the toolbar floats over on the side over here, and then the left-hand side, you've got the, the page browser, which can then also be um, a media browser, resource browser, and so on. So if you're looking for a pen, here's the pen. I click on the pen, you have a color choice here, a limited palette, but you can choose others if you want to. You can right click and choose more palette, more colors, but a limited palette there. Um, let's just choose the black and I'll write on the board. I'm going to use my mouse so the writing is not brilliant. Underneath the colors, um, there are four dots, four black dots. Those four black dots are shortcuts to pen thicknesses you're going to want to use for writing so it goes from a, like a one pen up to a, a six pen eight pen sorry below that is a slider that slider goes fr not fr from the, the dots above it that slider goes from a one pen up to a 99 pen which is probably a little bit excessive for most of you but you never know when you might want it you can just shortcut straight back to a, a decent writing pen by clicking on the size dot uh, some people do get quite confused by they think that the slider goes from small to to eight and it doesn't um, choose color right with the pen if you go to the arrow button you can then move the things that you've done so if you go to selection you can then move things around if I click and drag a box around things the whole thing gets selected and up the top here you have some shortcuts to to common features that people are going to want to do the cross is a quick anchor for moving things around the the curved arrow is a rotation tool then you also have what is a right click menu here as well which gives you all the things that you're going to want to do like um, convert um, cut copy paste delete and so on um, you've got a transparency slider you also have grouping and ungrouping so if I select those and group them then all the things are grouped together if I unselect them then now ungrouped uh, there's also a bring forwards bring backwards a clone they call it duplicate but clone uh, make bigger and make smaller on there so you have those features which are sort of quick to use on the board which are quite nice uh, an interesting uh, new addition to the right click menu which hasn't been on there before which is very smart like you can now right click and convert to text and it will take what you've written and turn it into type text there we go that wasn't there in previous versions of, of Active Inspire um, you used to have to turn the handwriting recognition on in advance and then write. Uh, it'll now do it after the event, which is um, nice to see them do. You also then have a highlighter. The highlighter immediately defaults to slightly thicker sizes and is slightly see-through. So if you use a highlighter, you can draw over the top of anything you want to and it's slightly see-through so you can see the writing hiding behind it. As well as the pen and the highlighter, there's the eraser, which will now actually rub things out with previous version, really old versions of Active Inspire, Active Studio didn't, the rubber wasn't a rubber, the rubber just made pen see-through, which is rather weird. Shapes are here, click on the shapes, and then the shapes toolbar will pop up down the side of your screen. You can then choose your colors, let's have green and red, and if I then draw a square. Um, the color you choose over on the right hand side on, on the toolbar there is the fill color, and the color you choose over here is the outline color and then that is the thickness of the outline. So I wanted the black outline with the green inside, I then can click and drag and do that. And then I can move that around. So that's shapes, there's a whole range of shapes here. If I right click, then a color picker will pop up and you can choose those. 
quick thing might be to go to the paint bucket and the paint bucket then chooses from these colours let's choose that colour and then let's fill and I'll fill that shape in so it's quite quick to do that I'm going to click on the right hand arrow here gives myself a next page that creates a second page for me and I'm going to do a quick activity using a yellow box or a black outline like so I'm going to go to duplicate at the top here which gives me an identical copy of that and then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fill that in with black so I've now got a black box and a yellow box uh, I'm going to click on the T which gives me a text I'm going to write my words in so I'll do do my two words and if I highlight one of those words um, up the top of the screen here you can see my text menu which gives me choices for all different kinds of text I'm going to click on the black and I'm going to change that to yellow if I then use the, the arrow selection I can move that over here move that over here and I've got a quick magic paper idea and again I've got magic paper tutorials um, that I've produced elsewhere on YouTube and on my blog I'll put the link up in the, the top of the page here um, do check it out. There is a, a squeezy bottle here and the squeezy bottle if I go back a page it will work best on here the squeezy bottle lets me clear different things off the screen. Now if I want to clear the annotations I can just clear annotations anything done with a pen will disappear. Clear objects will clear shapes and text but not the annotations. If I do clear objects then they'll vanish and the writing stays behind. If I do clear annotations the pen will disappear and the writing will stay behind and I can just do clear page completely and that'll go absolutely and the whole thing will be gone. There's also clear uh, the grid and clear the background as well if you put backgrounds and grids on there. Probably worth mentioning the grids while we're here. Differently to the way that Smart works, graph paper is kind of on the page already, it's just hidden. You don't have to grab it out of the gallery if you just want standard graph paper. Right mouse click on the page and you go to grid designer. If you go to grid designer you can then make the grid visible and then you can change how big you want the grid to be. You can also allow snap to grid, which is quite a useful feature if you want to use this for lining objects. Um, and you can actually allow snap and have the grid hidden. So the grid's active and running, but actually hiding. So let's turn on allow snap, and I'm going to close that for a minute. Um, now if I draw a square, any square I now draw will snap to the grid, and so will be that number of squares in size. So another one will be three in size. And I'll do another one. That would be like that. And if I move these around, they're going to snap. And if I drop them, they'll snap to the nearest grid. So if you wanted to line things up, that's quite nice. If I right click and hide grid, the grid is still going to do its job of letting things snap to it. But the things are going to. You're not going to see the grid. So it's not going to be a distraction. But if you want the grid visible, which you may well do because you're doing a graph, then we can throw up the grid again and then we can have these things lined up on the grid or we could be doing graph drawing I can throw some lines on here as well and do that. If I go back to the grid designer there are also different kinds of grids you can have so you can have uh, normal grids you can have 45 degree grids which are like that um, and you can choose the angle as well so you can pretty much do isometric paper if that's that's what you want. The other useful tools up on this menu bar here you will find uh, a little icon of a hammer and a spanner. The hammer and the spanner give you additional tools um, things such as um, quick access to magic ink and pen highlighter and so on but also handwriting recognition so if I turn handwriting recognition on and now if I write something rubbish with my mouse it'll take a few seconds and it'll recognize that and turn it into if I click on here and do shape recognition I can do a triangle or a shape and it will kind of try and snap it to a, a regular version of that shape as, as much as possible. I don't use that very much because the shapes are there but it's sometimes quite good for doing sort of lines of best fit on graphs and it will snap it to a, a decent straight line. Um, useful things you might want, we have the revealer here which will put a screen shade up and you can drag and reveal parts of the screen. Um, click on the dots up here to close it. Um, and I can also bring up a spotlight as well, which will bring up like a circular spotlight, and that will provide a spotlight which you can move around if you click on the black area. If you click on the blue line, you can make it bigger and make it smaller. It's really good for doing sort of guess what this picture is type activities. There are math tools such as rulers and set squares and protractors and dice. That's where you'll find the dice. Let's put a new page up and let's get rid of the thing. So if we go to math tools and dice roller then your dice appear. Change number of dice 
and roll. There we go. And you can output the number to the flip chart, which will tell you what the total of the dice was if you're doing that. Uh, and then finally, you also have some more tools which might be useful. Sometimes you're going to find you want to want a clock, you're going to want uh, an on screen keyboard. Um, then you've got a clock here which you can pick up and drag around. You can make bigger, so it's handy to have on a clock if, you, if you're um, doing um, a less amount of timed activity. Uh, and you can make this a countdown clock or a count up clock, so you can have a stop clock. And so if you want to give the students a particular time to do an activity, make it a countdown clock, count down for 30 seconds, and then after timeout, play a sound. You can also make it turn to the next page, turn to the previous page. So if you wanted to, you could set the clock up on page one and do a, like a one minute countdown and then turn to page two, turn to page three, turn to page four. I'll, um, and you can actually have like one minute, um, a fast paced maths activity or a fast paced set of questions, quick fire, 30 seconds per question, boom, 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 just to start the lesson off. If you want your resources, you find them up in the resource library here. Now it depends exactly how you've installed them. You need to check when you install Active Inspire, if you installed the resource library, it doesn't always get installed. But you should find um, backgrounds and grids and resource packs and sounds and then all the subjects will be down here in the subjects area so if you're looking for something particular for science for chemistry for history or so on then you can look in the folders and then scroll and there's also a keyword search up the top there that's pretty long enough for a quick introduction to active inspire take a look on my blog you'll find some guides there's printable sheets and there's a few other videos on there um, i will make some more tutorials for some of the things i've just touched on really quickly like how to make a drag and drop activity how to make magic paper um, i'll sort those out and they'll appear on my youtube channel soon please keep an eye on my blog for all the guides and the help if you like this video please subscribe um, you can contact me with any questions um, via my twitter i'm danny nick on twitter or you can go to the whiteboard blog and um, get me there um, add a comment below in the YouTube channel and um, I'll respond as soon as I can. What I will do is probably do another video looking at the primary feel um, for those that want that. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.